Greetings folks, meet the Electronics Max 15. And if I had to describe this laptop in one sentence, it would say power to weight ratio champ. At 3.8 pounds featuring a 2070 Max P, this 14 inch chassis featuring a 15.6 inch display, it's quite the feat and it's like nothing I've ever seen before considering its weight. The question is, can this tiny little chassis cope with that level of GPU performance? Let's find out. This is my in-depth review of the Electronics Max 15. The Max 15 uses a 15-inch magnesium alloy chassis. At 3.8 pounds and 0.77 inches thin, it is definitely the smallest and lightest of its kind. The i7-9750H gets two power limits, both set to 100 watts, but when combined with the GPU, it's limited to 60 watts. The RTX 2070 is a max performance edition at 115 watts, but there's no electro boost on the 2070, it did not make the thermal cut. There's two memory DIMM slots in total, both are occupied with dual channel two 8GB sticks at 2666. For storage, we have two M.2 drives total, and the network interface card is Intel's 9560. The 62 watt hour battery fills the space nicely, so do not expect to be able to upgrade this to a larger capacity. It's Optimus only laptop, good for about three to three and a half hours. The display is a full HD 144 Hz IPS, 98% standard RGB and 73% Adobe RGB at 301 nits. The power supply unit is small in size and is 230 watts. Strong benchmark performance from this setup. This is of course non-electro boosted 2070 Max P. It did not make the thermal cut. You're going to see why here in just a few moments. Now as far as the CPU, everything performance wise was very good on this chassis and the BIOS has a factory undervolt of negative 050. This is the maximum performance setting with the maximum fans with stock thermal paste. Now running maximum performance with that max fan, you will see the RTX 2070 Max P in this chassis thermal throttle. Once it hits that 86 to 87 degree thermal throttle threshold, the temperature drops, the power drops, and as a result, the frame rate drops. And this will go back and forth indefinitely. Now why the performance drop is not as big as I have seen on other laptops, putting a tune on the GPU that I have featured across many videos can go a long way. And as you can see here, we now have maximum temperatures in the low to mid 80s, just barely out of range of thermal throttling and the frame rate performance is higher than it ever was at stock. So very simple thing to do here. On top of that, I'm running the middle performance profile on the CPU, limiting the wattage of that to 45 watts. That's something that it does on its own. So this was a really nice balance to get the maximum performance from this chassis with very little compromise at this point. Let me show you what gameplay looks like now featuring this tune.
On the left hand side we have our lock, our LAN port, one USB 3.1, and a separate microphone and headphone port. On the right we have a micro SD card and two USB 3.1s. On the rear we have two mini display ports, a single HDMI, one USB-C, data only, no Thunderbolt 3 on this, and the barrel power port. The Windows Precision Touchpad is very smooth. I thought it was a little bit more precise and gestured slightly better than the Mac 17. A quick double tap on the top left hand side will disable the touchpad. The membrane style keyboard features a numeric pad, has zone RGB lighting, pretty nice to type on, and sounds like this. Just like the Mac 17, the IR camera for Windows Hello, the webcam, and the microphone are located at the bottom of the bezel. Have a look and listen. The 720p webcam, microphone, IR camera located at the bottom of the bezel means you are going to see the keyboard, my knuckles, keyboard stroke sound just like this, maximum fan. You will hear this. It does not want to dim itself out. Perhaps this needs an update. So just a heads up, you probably don't want to use this webcam with your fans at max. Now with the IR camera located at the bottom, a lot of times that camera, in order for it to be satisfied at recognizing your face, you do have to put your face in the center of the screen, which means you're either going to have to tip the display back or have a lower seating position. This is not going to affect everyone. It just depends on your ergonomics, so just a heads up. The current state of the software is the best it has ever been. We have four zone keyboard RGB, seven zone light bar RGB, we have three different performance mode. Office mode is really nice for just a nice quiet type environment. It should idle at around 28 decibels. You can still game very well with this mode, so check this out for yourself. Game mode will limit the CPU to 45 watts when combined with the GPU. Very nice way to control thermal performance using game mode. Turbo mode will allow the CPU to pull 60 watts when combined with the GPU load. Now if you're using the 1660 Ti or 2060, this will also enable Electro Boost, something that will not work with the 2070 Max-P, as shown previously due to the limitation of thermal headroom within the 15-inch chassis. Maximum fans will run at 53 decibels, and I like how we can set this independently between game mode mode and turbo mode, giving the customer more options for the best thermal performance. Should you desire a little bit of customization to the fan curve, that is actually available here as well. And on top of that, we have four different colors for the software, as you can see the purple, and then green, red, and blue. There's two features in the BIOS that I want to discuss in great detail in the description below. The first one is the Q key feature, and the second one is being able to undervolt in the BIOS. To ensure that you do not brick your system, there are some key details that you need to follow in the description below before you start messing around with undervolts within your BIOS. All right, kind of impressive. Now granted the webcam, microphone, IR camera at the bottom I would prefer those to be at the top. Maybe the micro SD card reader to a full size card reader as a content creator, that could also be a pro. But for a content creator with that 15 inch chassis, I think their Mag 15 suits that maybe a little bit better than this. But I do know a lot of people that like those two mini display ports and would prefer that over Thunderbolt 3. Who knew? Now, obviously the elephant in the room is this chassis, just not quite able to handle that 2070 Max-P. Well, you're in luck. Allow me to make a suggestion here. Electronics offers liquid metal applications for a small fee. They will do this in-house and then ship you the laptop like that. If this were my money on the line and I wanted this laptop, that's exactly what I would do because I'm very confident that with a liquid metal application, we are going to get very, very close to the kind of performance thermally that we would want out of this laptop featuring that GPU. So in my opinion, that's the way I would go about it. Now, of course, the software that you're playing, your ambient temperatures, that's gonna have a great deal of effect on whether or not this chassis as is with stock pace can cope within your environment and software that you are using. But for me and what I do with laptops, liquid metal on here, that's something that they will do. It is warrantied. And I think you are going to get the best of everything that this laptop is capable of with that level of thermal interface material. All right, folks, that's going to do it for now. That is my in-depth review of the Electronics Max 15. I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.